Orlando Skandrick. He's going to stop by the desk. We'll ask him about the state of the Cowboys, the injuries, and the race in the NFC East. We can't oh, wait for that. Finally, I'll have somebody to have my back on this show against that cowboy hate coming across mm. the table. We have a cowboy hater uh, and a lover. Well, it's going to be great. I, I, don't, I don't even know why I need to be on the show tomorrow. All we're going to see is a bunch of cowboy cheerleaders. You know, so really? we are? Orlando, our cowboys, oh, yeah. our cowboys, our yeah. cowboys. And, 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 you know, far be it for me. I don't want to look like the bad yeah. guy for reminding the world y'all haven't won a Super Bowl in 20 years. What makes y'all relevant? I thought America was a great country. Oh. I thought America was number one. I thought America was superior to most, if not all. Mm -hmm. Yet we have the Dallas Cowboys as the representation yeah. of America. Yeah. I mean, I think it's disgraceful. We don't, have, we don't have enough pom-poms for you, though. Mm. All those colors. That would, that would be Say tough. whatever you want, you know. I think I <laughs> That's good. tomorrow right here. Because I don't look on as good as you don't mean I don't look Orlando good. Skandrick. Like, all right. You look fantastic. Thank you, thank Heading into the NFL season, there are concerns surrounding the Panthers' offense, some due to injury. And yet, as we approach week four, Newton and the Panthers are 3-0 and and tied for first in the NFC South with the Atlanta Falcons. Now, of course, the defense, which ranks seventh overall, has played a large role in the team's success. But still, Cam has basically been responsible for all of the Panthers' offense, generating 76% of their offensive yards and seven of their eight total touchdowns, five passing, two rushing. Some are arguing that he's proven to be the most valuable player in the NFL, at least from the perspective of value to his team through week three. Cam for MVP, Stephen A. Smith. Are you cheering for that one? Well, I don't root against him because I got a lot of love for the kid. I think that he's going through a lot. I think the one blemish on his career obviously had things to do with family as opposed to himself from his college oh, yeah. days mm -hmm. or whatever. And, 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 I, and I applaud him for defending his loved one uh, the way that he did because yeah. most of us would. Um, since he's been a pro, the only issue we've ever had with him is that he seemed to get down on himself or down on others by putting a towel over his yep. head and his body language wasn't that that wasn't that great when you sh when you shred everything or put shove everything aside that is the only thing that we've been able to say negatively about Cam Newton. Mm -hmm. The development has been there. Now you sit there and look at him and say, he's got to get over the hump. He's got to take that to the next level. I remember Skip getting on him because of that pick 60 through the Cam Chancellor yeah. last year in the postseason. But that was against the Legion of Boom. That was against the number one defense in the NFL. And he was devoid of a lot of offensive weapons. And that was before. And you have to remember, that was because his GM decided to just clean house. Steve Smith was gone, along with a plethora of other individuals that ended up being gone as well. Now you got Jonathan Stewart, who's still there, he can't give you four yards of carry. He's only giving you 3.5 a game. D'Angelo Williams is gone. Steve Smith Sr. is gone. Kelvin Benjamin obviously went down, got injured. Mm -hmm. So what do we have? We have Cam Newton, and the only thing he has available to him is a suspect offensive line with guys I barely even know. Othar, I, oh, oh, you know, Michael O'Hare, I know him, mm -hmm. but Norwell, Cali, Turner, Remmers. I mean, when you look at this offensive line, to say it's suspect, I'm not going to say they're awful, but there's no... There's, there's never they've never been associated with greatness. Mm -hmm. So you got that offensive line and it's proven because their running game is somewhat suspect. Yeah. Off it, you know, he's been sacked already five times. Then you take that into account and you look at the weapons that he has available to him. We like Greg Olson. Yep. He's been on this show. He's if played he well. wants to, he clearly has a future in broadcasting, mm -hmm. but he's showing that he can still play. Had sure. about 134 yeah, yards last week, and, and the guy is their leading receiver. I mean, this mm -hmm. this is Greg Olson we're talking about here. He's your leading. He's your leading. You know, receiver, mm -hmm. yeah. and Ted Ginn Jr. is your number one receiver, mm -hmm. even though he's number two in yardage yeah. behind Olsen. Yeah. So your two primary targets is Olsen and Ted Ginn Jr. Mm -hmm. You have not much of a running game to speak of, and yet you're finding a way to feed off what mm -hmm. that good, that really, really good Carolina Panthers defense yeah. gives you, and you're managing to win games. So is he Aaron Rodgers? No. Is he Tom Brady? No. Is he Peyton Manning? No. And he certainly doesn't deserve the MVP award, particularly over Brady or Rodgers, because we know where New England and Green Bay, respectively, would be without those guys. But does he deserve to be in discussion after the three weeks, considering what they're doing and what he has to work with? Mm -hmm. I definitely think that Cam should be in the conversation. Mm -hmm. He deserves our respect. And yep. we have to acknowledge the job that he's doing under the circumstances yep. that he's being forced to do it. Uh, so, if we're talking about Cam for MVP, I'll just give you one scenario whereby it would apply. Okay. If this team 
catapults from its 3 and 0 start and finishes I'm going to throw this out 14 and 2 he would be right in the thick of the MVP race because I'm pretty sure he would have to be a he would have to be the biggest reason they went 14 and 2 do you think they can go 14 and 2 no way. I don't I th they are clearly the worst of the 3 and 0 teams so far and that's no reflection on them. They, they just are what they are, and they really haven't played anybody of note yet. Mm -hmm. Their opponents are a combined so far two and seven. Mm -hmm. So they won at Jacksonville 20 to nine, and they beat the Texans at home by seven, and then they barely held off the Saints and Luke McCown mm -hmm. at, at home last weekend, 27-22, thanks to a spectacular interception by Josh Norman, who's turning into a stud cornerback. So we get back to the defense. It's now ranked so far, just through three games against three mediocre opponents, mm -hmm. it's ranked second in points allowed. Okay, that's that's pretty great so yeah. far. You know, so far mm -hmm. against nobody yet, but still, I look at the defense, they lost Charles Johnson to IR for eight weeks, but they just they went out and got Jared Allen. I thought that was a sweet pickup because I think he can still play and he can still help this team. Mm -hmm. And uh, Keekley's had a concussion, but I assume he'll be back maybe this week. Mm -hmm. And then I just mentioned Josh Norman and Thomas Davis is just a tackling machine. So this defense is pretty legit. The defense reminds me of the team that took them to a 12 and 4 record yeah. and a playoff berth okay. in San Francisco a couple of years back. Okay. Uh, the offense just leaves an well, awful remember, lot to Remember, and he decided. lost Kelvin Benjamin, his big 6 5 stud receiver, back in training camp yeah. to a freaky shit injury and I thought that Devin Funches would come out of Michigan as a pretty high draft pick mm -hmm. but I think he's going to be fine I okay, just think he just hadn't early. done much yet yeah, I just think it's too early. figured it out I, I just think it's too early but okay. remember how we sat here last year and we were like how could they yeah. do this to Cam they All took right. away like his top I, I four they receiving did. weapons yeah I'm like how do you put this guy in that position you know and they're like well we got to pay him and I'm like yeah you got to pay him but you got to figure out a way to make sure that you got weapons around him they literally put Cam out there offensively that yeah. is they put him out there on an island all by himself, and they still managed to win the South with a 7-8-1 and one record. Okay. Okay? And I think they'd be commended for that, but it's just, it was a travesty okay. that they put him through that. So you ask me these kind of questions. I'm going to ask it back to you. Sure. Cam Newton already leads all quarterbacks in rushing with 144 rush yards. Mm -hmm. he, he is the, the second leading rusher on their football team mm -hmm. to Jonathan Stewart, yeah. obviously. Right. And, and in some games, I think he's going to be the first leading mm -hmm. rusher yeah. on their team because that's who they are. Can he stay upright through all those games? Let me tell you why he can. Some people use his athletic ability. He's big. He's strong. I, if I'm wrong, it's because I only see what the camera shows me because I haven't been to any Carolina Panthers game, even though I would love to be because I love me some Charlotte, North Carolina. Mm -hmm. But I will tell you this. Cam seems to me to be a smart runner. He's not exactly Russell Wilson, mm -hmm. but he's pretty close. As far as sliding goes. Yeah. Well, yeah. he doesn't have to because Cam yeah. usually running to the side mm -hmm. and he's usually getting out of bounds. He's not usually running to the middle of the field, mm -hmm. as far as I can tell. Yep. Again, I'm not at the game, so I don't see every play. Yep. But from the camera angles, when I see Cam, when I see Cam Newton running the football, he's usually not running where he's required to slide. Mm -hmm. He's usually running out of bounds. He doesn't get hit too much running outside the pocket. That doesn't happen to him all the time. And I, and I attribute that to his intellect because he's not trying to do it. Think about how embarrassing it was when we were talking about RG3 and we were like literally suggesting that he go over to the Nationals to, to let them teach him how yeah, to slide. Yeah. All right, yeah. because he wasn't getting out of bounds. I agree. And when he was in bounds, he was diving head first, which gives them the license yeah. to hit. Because we didn't want him to get or injured. He, or he didn't slide. Or he didn't slide properly. Yep. Cam doesn't have that problem. Cam knows how to get out of bounds, mm. and I give him credit for that. Plus, he's bigger and he can take more hits, but he knows how to get out of bounds. And we're going to talk about the hockey league controversy a little yeah. later in the yep. show. But this is why Cam is hanging in there on on what he says yep. hockey league said to him because he wants protection when he runs with the football. He wants to, within the rules mm -hmm. to be protected like everybody else gets protected. And why? Yeah, we are going to talk about yes. that. I thought about some good points. Oh, good. All right. Yeah. One quick question yes. before I get in trouble by our producers. Awesome. Are they the best team in the NFC South right now? Yeah, you'd have okay. to say that. By the way, no, no, no. Oh, I, I forgot about Atlanta. Yeah. Atlanta. I, say Atlanta. I say the Falcons are, but yeah, by the I way, yeah. you don't worry about getting in trouble with the producers. Skip's got you. I don't know about me because you're from Connecticut. Hey, but you're the one you. who runs this show. You got your police. Oh, uh, please. <laughs> you no, know you lying. That's hey. right. Oh, my That's goodness. Goodness. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah. Yeah.
<laughs> this man is connected. Please, He's connected please, at the please, highest level. Please, Am I not right? Please, please. Out of first you take, both baby. are. Well, trust please, me, I'm the rookie. Cam Newton is getting a lot of love right now with the oh three and O star, but is he MVP worthy? Kim and Stephen A have given their takes. We want yours. Go to Twitter and vote yes or no using the hashtag MVP for Cam and let us know if you think he is worthy of the MVP. LeBron is feeling the love in Cleveland this season, but will there be too much love on the Cavs in 2015? You'll see what I was trying to do there in just a minute. We'll be right back.